Hi, thanks for spending a moment with me on the video version of the Norman Goldman Show. Let's talk about criminal law because I was a practicing attorney for 25 years and I did some criminal law, but a lot of people really don't understand the distinctions between the different kinds of law. In criminal law, it's the government versus a person. Now, companies sometimes get prosecuted, but let's keep it simple. Let's talk about a person charged with, say, bank robbery. In criminal cases, the whole point of the case is to take someone's liberty away from them. Essentially what the government is saying is this person is not fit to be on the streets with the rest of us. So the person gets taken off the streets and put in a cage. We call it jail or prison. The idea of criminal law is punishment, it's separation of people who are not fit to be in society, sometimes rehabilitation. The real idea is punishment. And so the idea of criminal law is it's the government versus a person. Now, sometimes money is involved, but those are fines. Those are punitive. The root word from punitive is punishment. So if you get, say, a bank robber uh, who gets five years in state prison and a $10,000 fine, the whole point of all of that is punishment. In a criminal case, just like we we're talking about in the video on traffic tickets, the government has the burden of proof. That's why you'll see in criminal cases, defendants very rarely take the stand. In very many criminal cases, they don't even call any witnesses. They just sit there. Now, their lawyer will cross-examine the government's witnesses, will try and poke holes in the government's witnesses' theories and all, but the defendant has no obligation to speak. The defendant has no obligation to put any evidence forward. The government has the burden of proof. And because the problem is somebody's liberty is at stake, the government has to prove its case beyond a reasonable doubt. If you're looking at it on a number basis, it's like 90 to 95% certain. The jury has to be 90 to 95% certain that this person did the crime charge. In the traffic ticket cases that we were talking about, if the police officer doesn't show up, then all you have to do is say, let me out of here. Because the police officer is the government in a traffic ticket case, and if the government isn't there to bring its case, then you win automatically. Also, there's one more point you should be aware of. Think about a criminal case. The judge works for the government. The court is paid for by the government. The police, who are often the witnesses in criminal cases, work for the government. The prosecutor works for the government. In fact, if you're spending time in jail in anticipation of a trial because people can't make bail, the jails are owned by the government. In a criminal case, it's really not a fair fight. It's the government and all of the government's resources. Their labs are analyzing blood and hair and tissue samples, and their lab technicians are testifying at trial. Their prosecutors. I mean, it's all the government coming down like a ton of bricks on some average citizen. So because it's all the government versus a person, and that can be a little scary to a lot of people, we try to create a balance where there is already an automatic imbalance. That's why people get a free lawyer if they can't afford one. That's why the government has to prove its case beyond a reasonable doubt. That's why judges are supposed to bend over backwards to protect the rights of the person accused of a crime until they're convicted and then sentenced. The idea is we have a very unbalanced system here where it's the government with all of the government's massive resources against a person who very often doesn't even have the money to hire a basic competent attorney. Certainly not a kind of money to hire investigators, to hire lab technicians, and to do all the things that you need to fight a government case. So understand that in a criminal case, it's always in the name of the people. It's the people of the state of California or the people of the United States, because only the government has the ability to take us off the streets and stick us in a cage called jail. One last point. You often hear about a misdemeanor and a felony. There really is a simple difference between the two. A misdemeanor is less than one year in jail. A felony is one year or more in state prison. If you are sentenced to less than a year, now I'm not implying you're a criminal, but let's just take you. Let's say you're sentenced to six months in jail. That means automatically that you've been convicted of a misdemeanor. If you are sentenced to a year or two years or whatever, more than a year, then you're going to state prison and that's a felony. 
There are ways after the fact, after a person has served their time, to get a lawyer and go into court and have a, a case, a felony or a misdemeanor, expunged. That's what it's called, taken off your record. These are very technical matters. Not all crimes can be expunged, and there are criminal defense attorneys that specialize in it. So just be aware that people can kind of rehabilitate their image or their record after they serve their sentence, under some circumstances. But I hope I've given you a basic acquaintance with the criminal law. I hope you watch the other videos and do check our website, normangoldman.com, and check out our $5 a month podcasting at normangoldman.com, which has lots more of this kind of stuff in it in our Beyond the Norm segments. We'll see you next time.